The boy in the pic is Jason Landry, the youngest of the three children of a marriage formed by Lisa and Kent Landry, a pastor of the Presbyterian Church in Missouri City, Texas, place where Jason grew up. After graduating from Ridge Point High School, he began studying at San Marcos State University, also in Texas. His father describes him as the typical student who had no problems with anyone. At the end of 2020 the young man finished his first semester at the university and it is known that during those months he was working very hard to be accepted into a prestigious sound recording technology program. On Sunday December 13, 2020 at 11 to 5 at night, Jason left his apartment in San Marcos. It was Christmas vacation and he was going in his car to Missouri City to spend the holidays with his family. This trip should not have taken him more than three hours, however Jason never arrived at his destination. At 12 and 31 minutes at night, a volunteer firefighter passing through Salt Flat Road, in Luling, Texas, discovered Jason's car destroyed, apparently by an accident. Inside there was no trace of the boy. However the lights were still on, the keys were on and the door on the front passenger side was closed, which implied that at that moment he was alone. When the police officers arrived at the scene, they found that Jason's wallet, his mobile phone, a laptop and a small amount of marijuana were inside the vehicle. At 2 a.m., Kent Landry received a call from a policeman. In his own words, the call that no parent wants to receive. The agent told him that his son had had a car accident on a rural road, and that everything indicated that he had hit several trees and a fence. But the most disturbing thing for Kent was when he found out that there was no trace of Jason. At that moment the man went to the scene of the accident to meet the police, and once there he began to search the area. Less than 300 meters from the vehicle, he found the clothes that his son was wearing that day. This was known because a few hours earlier the boy had uploaded to his social networks several photos where he appeared with this garnet t-shirt, which was the one that later appeared along with his pants and his wristwatch. When analyzing these clothes, they found Jason's blood in his pants. The police said that surely the young man had been injured when he came into contact with the barbed wire fence after the accident. In addition, everything seemed to indicate that he had removed it in a normal way. That is, there were no signs that he had been forced or fought. Sometime later they confirmed that there was no remains of blood either at the scene of the accident or inside the car. The search and rescue teams recorded 31 square miles for nine days. This search was joined by several volunteers, helicopters, drones and police dogs. According to the agent in charge of the case, these dogs found what appeared to be Jason's trail between an abandoned house and a pond that was near the accident site. Obviously the house was searched and the pond drained but they did not find any clue indicating what had happened to the young man. Two months later, the researchers published the timeline they had built from Jason's mobile phone and laptop. At 11.11 they placed Jason in Martindale, Texas, and continue south on Highway 80. At 11.24 the young man arrives in Luling and it is here that he stops using the mobile browser and goes on to use Snapchat. It is known to pass through the intersection of Magnolia Avenue and East Austin Street, and that's where Jason's fingerprint stops. The agents believe that he continued through East Austin until he reached Salt Flat Road. They also said that when they found Jason's phone inside the car, it was on and had a signal, so they don't understand why he didn't use it from the intersection of Magnolia Avenue, especially after having suffered an accident. The agents continue to work tirelessly in this case and part of the investigation is focused on finding out what happened in those 67 minutes that elapsed from Jason's last fingerprint to the discovery of the crashed car. To talk about the theories it is important to mention that the road where Jason's car appeared was not within the route he had to do to get to Missouri City. Investigators believe that perhaps the phone's GPS caused Jason to deviate from his path by mistake. Based on the footprints left by the tires on the gravel road, he was able to try to correct his error but the lack of visibility led him to crash the back of his vehicle against a tree and a fence. The agents reiterated in the media that there are no indications that alcohol or certain substances had contributed to the accident. For his part, Jason's father also believes that his son deviated from the road due to a GPS error. But he believes that the accident could have occurred to avoid running over a deer. According to him, perhaps Jason hit himself on the head that left him in shock, which would justify taking off his clothes. It is the only explanation he finds for this because also that night the temperature was 4 degrees. 
Kent told in an interview that he did with one of the investigators the route that could have taken his son to Salt Flat Road. It was there that they found that a false step could have easily taken the student in that direction following the natural slope of the road. Even so, this is nothing more than theories and there are still many things that have no explanation, such as what happened during those 67 minutes. Maybe someone was chasing him? Why didn't he call for help? And most importantly, where is Jason Landry? It is known that the young man's parents offered a reward of $10,000 for anyone who can provide information that takes them to their son's whereabouts. Today, Jason Landry has been missing for more than three years and his family has not yet lost hope of finding him alive.